today from Hard Rock Stadium. There's Nick Folk ready to put this one in the air. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And no run back on this one, so the new season will begin at the 25-yard line. And here comes the Miami offense now, and it's the Southpaw in his third season at the wheel for the Fins. Quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. For the second consecutive season, Tua's a starter, and Miami's a team. Both had winning records, but missed the playoffs. His numbers, they weren't terrific. Only 2,600 yards and 16 touchdowns against 10 interceptions. But he also overcame fractured ribs early in the season to return and play well down the stretch. And don't forget, when he did come back, he led Miami to six straight wins, which kept them in the playoff race. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. a couple sets of eyes were on the quarterback so he decided hey I'm going to hand this off got a good gain out of it and you know you need good blocking up front in order to gain yardage but every one of these RPOs if you do it right and they look the same whether it's handed off inside or the quarterback keeps it that allows you to fool the defense so often and in this case fooled them with the inside run five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five if you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. That good for 19 on a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Now a give to Mostert running right. Matt Judon there to bring him down. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Throwing now is Chunga Vailoa. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Doubt a very disappointing end to what was a pretty strong opening drive. They had three points in their back pocket. It was there for them. If you don't like what you see, just throw it away. Make sure you get those points on the board. Don't get too greedy. He forced it there. You saw the end result. Very good starting position for the Patriot offense as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They start on the ground with Elliott. And taken down just shy of the 40. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, Elliott once more. And only a couple for him there as the tackle is made at the 42. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. 14 yards is the pickup there and a New England first down. Well, partner, that's the start that you are right there. And you know 
We spent the entire offseason throwing hundreds, I'd probably say thousands of passes, getting ready for that moment. The first throw of the new season. He's dreamed about it, thought about it, and now it's out of the way. Yeah, one for one, a lot more to go. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your O-line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Again, it's Elliott, and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Throwing Jones. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been dropping. That's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. So on fourth down, Jones jogs off, and on comes a longtime vet, Nick Folk, for the Pats field goal try. Folk's kick is good, and the Patriots jump out to a 3 0 lead. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra. Give the ball up. What's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Their first drive of the game, they were moving the ball okay, then the interception, but they only gave up three points the other direction. Yeah, and that's a big relief for them because when you give up an interception like that, it can be such a momentum changer. But to only give up three on the back end gives you a chance to walk back out on the field, and while you're behind, it doesn't feel insurmountable at all. They'll start on the ground with Moster. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Right there, 54, right there, right there, 54. 
throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. I know nowadays they give a lot of guys different things when they get to the sidelines after creating a big play, but just throw a cape on this guy because he single-handedly ended multiple drives. Interception earlier, sack on third down. Really? Should have a better game plan installed for how to contain him because he's affecting this game in so many ways. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. The deep to return it is Marcus Jones. He'll take it at the 42. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Patriots take over. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. And Charles, nothing like squaring off with a division opponent, a division rival in week one. Do you like that they are matching up this early, or would you prefer a game like this be a few weeks down the road? I actually like the early matchup for a few reasons, Brandon. First of all, it allows you to see that in the entire offseason and know, hey, right out of the gate, we're playing a division game. Second part is it spreads them out a little bit. If you just have them all bunched up at the end of the year, that's not as much fun watching teams try to survive that gauntlet when you do have injuries down the stretch and last but not least let's face it we're tv people what a great game to sell right out of the gate that was well played there defensively two tight ends in the formation which essentially gave them seven blockers up front hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through but that's exactly what happened a loss resulted now jones and that will be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when well, we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Miami set to take over. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Now Tua. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. They fake the handoff, now Tua. He's going to air one out. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Marcus Jones picks it, and the Pats will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day-two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Jones throwing to start the drive. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down, Elliott. 
And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Elliott saw the fewest carries of his career in 2021, but that didn't stop him from still going across 1,000 yards for the fourth time and finishing top 10 in the league in both yards and touchdowns. Another productive season from one of the league's best backs. They go to Elliott again. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Up the middle, here's Elliott. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Throw left side complete. That's Elliott. And he will have a Patriots first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it. By maybe the length of a football. Mike McDaniel, he's going to ask him to take a closer look at this call. And out comes the challenge flag. The thing that they'll be looking at is the spot of the football. And uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football. That's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have one challenge remaining. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Flushed out right. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, the best don't mind making tough throws, but that was a real difficult one right there. Out of the pocket, trying to beat double coverage. More times than not, that's going to end up as an incomplete pass, if not worse. And he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Is this a hold, or did they rough the quarterback? Okay, so roughing the passer, and I've got to imagine that's the last thing you want to see week one is your quarterback taking an unnecessary hit. I think you're exactly right about that. You hate it any week, but boy, are you on target. This is you know, this depending on him to take him through 17 games, so you definitely can't let him get hurt right now. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try to put it in that way. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Now Jones, going to throw on third and goal. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Juju Smith-Schuster, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And they're able to add on to their advantage. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook, not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses, also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. Fulk now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Tua Tonga Vailoa and the Dolphins offense heading back out. And he's had his struggles here early with a couple of interceptions as he'll try to refocus with a first and ten to start this drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. 
Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. Rolling to his right. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Good work on the scamper by Tug of Iloa. It's a first down. They'll run right side with Mostert. They'll get this to about the 38. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. From the 38, Tua. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 34-yard line. That's good for 28 yards. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. A run with Mostert up the middle. And a short gain down to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Once again, it's Mostert. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A chance for their first points of the season here as it's first and goal. Here's Mostert. And this time he is in. Raheem Mostert, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are back within a score. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. Kick it away after the touchdown. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. A good job in the passing game. DC job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. On second and ten. Jones on the move to his left. And this is caught. It's Parker. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Back to throw. Jones looking left side, and it's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 23 yards on the play. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And the Dolphins are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. He's been having a good day so far, but I think he got a little overzealous on that one. Still young in this league. Has to learn to try not to do too much on an individual play because, as we all know, sometimes less is more. And throwing away is preferable to making the big mistake. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Here's Tua. And his throw here is incomplete. 
textbook coverage right there. Played the ball, never lost sight of where it was headed, and stayed in perfect position to make a play on it. Able to keep the receiver and the quarterback in his sight lines. Tug of Ilo are going to try and throw on third down. He is going to find Hill here. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down. And he was able to get it by play. A gain of eight on third and three. First down, Tongue of Iloa. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Joe Juan Williams. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. It just appeared there that the defense, they had that red from the moment the ball was snapped. And not only did they get the interception, add a nice return on top of it, all the way to the end zone for a defensive touchdown. Yeah, and the guy who made the play, he gets the points. That really was a group effort, wasn't it? How about the coaches? They've got to be so excited. All the preparation, time in the film room, it translated into a big play that put points on the board for their team. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. Takes it at the seventh. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. We start in New Jersey on this September the 11th. The New York Jets playing host to visiting Baltimore here in week one. And it's the Ravens out in front as that game moves towards halftime. Devin Duvernay, a touchdown reception. From there, we head over to the Windy City. To check on the Bears at home, Soldier Field. And they trail in that one as it's the visiting 49ers who are out in front. The 49ers trying to hold on and claim victory. Lastly, we head to Southern California to check on the Rams at home at SoFi Stadium. And they were winners in their ball game over the visiting Buffalo Bills. The Rams with an ideal start as they move to 1-0 in front of their home faithful. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
we'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. This fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. We'll remind you that coming up tonight, the first Sunday nighter of the new season. And how about this for a matchup? The Buccaneers and the Cowboys from Dallas, 820 Eastern. Then tomorrow, Monday night, just one game here in week one this year. And it'll pit the Broncos and Seahawks as Russell Wilson makes his Bronco debut. And of course, where is it? Seattle. Coincidence? We'll let you decide. Kwan Williams, the one that got him down. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Inside give to Elliott. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. 53 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing, and now it's third and three. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and ten at the 45. Out of the gun, it's Elliott to about the 48-yard line. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and now it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Here's Jones to throw on third down. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at the 20. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Two are going to throw. And this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. So holding there on the return, and that'll back him up to start the next drive. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call right there, partner. I think when the officials look in their manual and see the expression, jersey getting pulled, that's a flag coming out every time. A give to Elliott. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. From the 30 on second down, Jones. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. 
They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Man open, here is Jones. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Elliott is into the end zone. Touchdown, New England. Well, that was a quick drive. The passing game set it up, and then the running game finishes it off. And how about how few plays it was to get it done, but they threw it downfield and then pounded it into the end zone. And as a former defender, I can tell you, it hurts just a little bit more when they run it into the end zone instead of throwing it. Fulp now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. At this point in the game and the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. Oh, they stopped them shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. They hand it off to Moster, and he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it, and it's second down. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down, here's Mostert again. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Fine work by the Patriot D there, and it's fourth down. So fourth down, two of departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Sanders' kick is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So that maybe not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. Hardman, he is not going to bring this out, so they will start the drive at the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Over the middle complete, it's Henry. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Altogether, a pretty shaky start to the year for this defense as they defend another first and ten. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Second and five now. Jones. And this is Parker. Complete. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. But normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know. Maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack. But you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. Second and five now. Jones. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the shotgun, again to Elliott. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 91 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you've got to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Brandon Jones picking it off. And the Dolphins are right back in this football game. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Deion Jones, the linebacker. And he takes this one back into the end zone. The Patriot defense has a touchdown. Well, this defense just continuing to do their thing, and now they add on to that lead with another pick six. And how about the way they've played this entire game? Not only have they put their stamp on it, but every time they try and mount an offensive challenge, they find a way to thwart it. And multiple pick sixes? Oh, yeah, they'll enjoy watching this tape after the game. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And whatever promise they showed in the preseason has not translated into week one because they have not been particularly competitive here at home, no less. So these fans just kind of beside themselves right now. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Looking to pass. Tua. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he's got room. And some good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 18 big yards on that one. And a Miami first. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. On second down, Moster, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. On play action, here's Tua. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. And the Patriots are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long, and I would say that going along with that has been confidence because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them, and now it's been a real issue for them during this game. A first down carry by Elliott, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Elliott going to get it again on second down. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 125 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Again, it's Elliott. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. While the medical staff checks on him, we'll step aside in this week one contest. Touchdown number 70. And the Patriots are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Folk connects on the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Folk now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Miami's offense set and ready to go. 
Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots' D on third down. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. They'll try it now with Mostert. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Patriots take over, and they're going to have terrific field position. So first and 10 now from the 30. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. This was not just the opener of a brand new season, but this was a division game here in week one. And to come through with a 1-0 start against a division opponent gives you a little something extra heading forward for the rest of the season. Yeah, let's pile it all into one game, right? Opening the season and you open within the division. You knew the motivation was going to be there on both sidelines. One just executed better and earned the win. So for the Pats, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road. You can't ask for much more than that to start the year. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, for my